Welcome. In the last video, we left off looking at how to create nodes. We looked at how to create element nodes and text nodes, and then we looked at how to add them to each other or append them. And when we left off, I said that we had learned the tools to already look at how to add these nodes to the DOM. We're going to explore this in depth, but what I first want to check is that you figured out that you could actually use append a child to add things into the DOM. So let's start off by looking at how we could do this using the tools we looked at in the last video. Now in the last video, we looked at how to create text nodes and how to create element nodes. We also looked at how to add text nodes or append them onto element nodes. What we didn't mention though, was that if you select an element from the existing DOM, for example, what I'm doing here is I'm getting this content element here, getting that div right here, and then in the same way that I've appended children in the past, I'm going to take the paragraph element that we just built that had this text in inside of it, and we're going to append that onto the existing DOM. So when I refresh the page here, notice how we see our new paragraph tag with the text and when we do outer HTML to spit it all out we see it appearing there as well now there's no spaces here there's no line breaks so if you wanted to do that you can play around with adding other empty nodes in there as well however we're usually just concerned with how things are going to look on the front end and we could do this using a pen child now in addition to a pen child we also have some other methods available to us that can be quite helpful the first one that we want to look at is the insert before method. Now this is more complex, but if you remember a pen child, it would always add things to the very end. We didn't really have an option to add things before another element. And that is what the insert before method allows us to do. On the far left, we get a parent element. So we have to figure out the parent element that we're working with. And then we pass in as a parameter, the new element that we just created. And then the second parameter is going to be the element that we want to add it before. So we cannot just say add this before just by telling it what element we want to add before. We have to add the parent element as well. So let's jump into the code and take a look at this in action. Now before I explain this, I want to just give everybody a heads up. If you have not worked with this stuff before, this is about the point or maybe a little bit past the point when things can start getting a little fuzzy. Maybe in the past you could watch one of these videos and just understand everything at first pass, but we're going to start getting into areas where you will need to come back and reread this code, practice it, work it out until it really begins to make sense. And the reason is, is we're gonna start passing in a lot of parameters, we're attaching methods to other objects, and it can just get a little complicated if you haven't read this stuff before. So I just wanna tell you, it's okay. Let your mind be fuzzy, just begin absorbing, and then take the time to go through, code it, walk through line by line, bit by bit, and piece everything together. Okay, so with that said, let's break this down. What we've done is select our main content div so that's going to be this one right here and then we're saying give me the children i want not the first but actually the second remember javascript is zero index so when we have an array of the children one is going to actually be the second element and that one is going to be this paragraph right here so if we were to put the content children zero that would give us the title because that's the first one however we want to insert before this line right here so we're naming that appropriately first paragraph. That makes sense. And then all of this is stuff you've seen before. This is something that you've already seen before. And finally, we get to the new stuff. So the way insert before works is first you have to select the parent element. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to take this new paragraph tag I created and inserted it right and insert it right before this line. Okay, so in order to do that, I have to find the parent element, which is the main content div. And then the first parameter that insert before accepts is the new paragraph element or the new node that we created. And then the second parameter is where we want to insert this before. So when I run this, notice that we see newum inside of a paragraph tag inserted before our first paragraph, which is this one right here. Now let's change this up a bit. Let's change this value to zero. And where do we expect this to be inserted? At the very top. Let's change it to two. 
where do we expect it to come? Right before the third element. But then if we changed it to something like eight, notice that there is no eighth element. So where is it going to insert? It's going to do the best it can and just stick it in at the very end. So let's change this back to one. Children, okay, so we've got it all inserted before. And the reason that this if we change it to a higher value than exists, it knows where to put it is because it knows the parent element. It knows where we still want to put this. Ultimately, it's going to go inside of here. So even if this fails, it will still know to drop it inside of this element. So now you might think, okay, we learned insert before. Let's look next at insert after. This is where I have to bring up the important note that there is no native insert after in JavaScript. However, it doesn't mean that we can't create it ourselves, and we're going to do this by using insert before plus next sibling. So let's take a look at this in action. So before we run through and execute this code, basically understand that we're going to try to do the same thing we did before. However, instead of inserting before this paragraph, we're going to try to insert after. All of this code is the exact same, except when we come down into insert before, Notice that instead of saying first P like we did before, let's just see that run like last time. Notice that that's going to stick Newum up here. But when we add in next sibling, that's going to add it after. So let's talk about this. When we first started talking about traversing the DOM, I said the previous and next sibling properties are going to be super useful. And this is one of the reasons why. JavaScript does not have an insert after. So if you try to insert something after an element, you can't do that unless you use this method. But this method should make sense. What you're saying is you're technically saying insert before, but instead of saying insert before this one, you're saying insert before the next sibling than the one I mentioned here. So this is just a little trick if you ever need to insert something after then you could do it this way. And it also brings up something very important about the programmer's mind. And the programmer's mind is one that knows how to take small components and little things like, oh, if I can't get this element, but I know I could get the next one by using this method, such as next sibling, I could piece these together. So as you start looking at more complex JavaScript, you're going to see things that are methods, accepting parameters that are actually properties of an object, and things like this. So again, don't let this concern you or overwhelm you too much. I guarantee by the time you work through some of the projects we're going to build coming up, that all of this will become second nature, but at first it may be a little bit confusing. However, we are developing the skill set now to be able to implement these things. So we don't have insert after, but we know how to create it by simply doing insert before and using next sibling. Now, there's one more method that I want to mention before we close out here, and that is the replace child method. What replace child does is the same thing. It makes you select a parent element and then pass in a parameter, the new element. However, instead of with the insert before saying what element you want to insert before, it says what element do you want to replace? So this is simply going to take a new element that you created and swap out an existing element with your new element. Very simple and can be quite helpful. So let's take a look at this in the code. Again, we're seeing code that's very similar to what we saw before. We're getting our content, we're getting the first paragraph, we're creating our own paragraph element with a text node inside of it, and then we come down to replace child. What is this doing? It's saying, okay, I have a parent element called content, and then I want to take my new paragraph element I created and replace, remember replace child, the first paragraph with my new one. So when I run this in the browser, I should see Lorem to the Ipsum replaced with Newum. And that is exactly what we get. If I were to change this to insert before, it would actually work the same way. We see now it's before, but if we do replace child, boom, that changes. If we were to change this to zero, what's it going to change? It's going to change the title. If we were to change it to two, What's it going to do the last one? What do you think will happen when we do three? 
Hmm. In this case, we get an error. Remember when we did insert before and we selected an element that didn't exist? Notice that it added it. However, replace child is different and replace child needs to know, hey, what element are you trying to replace? And if it does not exist, if this element is made up, let's just make it eight to prove our point. It's gonna say, hey, this parameter is not type of node. Really, it's a type of, it doesn't exist. So this is not going to work. Replace child is not going to be as lenient. So you have to make sure you're selecting something that actually exists. But if you do, you've got an easy way to swap out content. So you could probably imagine there are a lot of places where maybe you have some element on the page and somebody does something, you're like, oh, let's swap that out and give them something else. And this is how you would do that using replace child. Now, before we wrap up, let's take some time to review here. We started off and we looked at how a pen child from the last video, this will allow us to select something in the DOM and simply append something to the end. Append means it's gonna go at the very end. We also have this option of insert before, and we could say, hey, before this element right here, go ahead and insert in my new element. And this will work even if the before element we select doesn't really exist. And the reason is, is because it also needs to know what the parent element is that you're going to add an element inside of. Next, because there is no insert after method, we looked at how to use next sibling along with the insert before to insert something after and basically do the same thing as an insert after, but without having a defined method just for that. Finally, we looked at how we could swap out or replace elements using replace child, which just like insert before, needs to know the parent element that you're working inside of. However, unlike insert before, it was not forgiving. And if we try to select an element that doesn't exist, it's going to fail. So now it's practice time again. At this point, what I would suggest is go to somebody's site, open up your console, down in the console, try creating some elements on the fly and then swapping them out, adding them to the page. And you're gonna begin to be adding your own elements into somebody else's web page just on the fly. It feels a little hacky, it feels a little powerful. If you would rather work in your own console or in your own um, local text file and just begin editing some code and playing within the browser, you could do that as well. But I find that working in the console and something live helps simulate that environment and give you something um, kind of fun to play around with and really begin to feel the power of the stuff that you're learning when you begin editing somebody else's page on the fly. So go ahead and take some time to practice that. And then when you come back in the next video, we're going to look at how we can begin cloning DOM nodes. So this is a little bit different than just adding our own. And again, it could be something quite helpful.